going. Um, if everybody could stay muted, and then if you have a question, unmute yourself and ask Jim. I think that's probably the best way yeah, to go. Or you can also um, chat to me or chat to the group, um, and I'll be monitoring the chat. So I can, if, if it's an easy question that I can answer, I'll, I'll do that. Um, but, you know, <coughs> this is supposed to be interactive. So, you know, we don't want to. Uh, and if you get lost in the process, just hang tight. We'll get you through it. Um, it may be at the end, you know, um, but it would be a, I'm a little under the weather today. Allergies are killing me. Okay. Um, so we're getting there. So do you have yours on so that you're, so I'll be able to mute oh, can get myself here. Just getting our getting the video getting our audio squared away. Uh, and you want my volume down? Can you hear me on on the screen? Yeah, testing, testing. Oh, it's Batman. Yeah, I'm upstairs. Yeah, So what kind of machine does everybody have? Yeah, has a curl backer. Nice. Lagara front. I can't do it. Your heart speeds are here. Nice. Chat thing. Is that? You can't. You either need to be here or there. So well, I would say going to be on the machine. Yeah. Then you talk until it's time for me to do that. But then now you have to mute it. I am muted. No. No, you're not. That's what I'm saying. I can't. We can't work either. We need to be all one or all the other. Okay. Well, then we should do the introduction and then do this. We have the angle. I can mute you. I can mute you here. Okay. The angle's still good. Yeah. You are unmuted, Jim. Off we go. All right, we'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. Does everybody know how to cast on? Good. So this is um, this is going to be a beginner class that makes you look like an intermediate. It's a nice, easy sock to make. You don't look like a Christine. <laughs> it's my wife's computer. Yeah, I'm actually invading her 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 knitting space. You know, you can see behind me all the 
the drawers. I can't, drawers I can't hear you right now because I got my phone, which is 10 feet away, has got the, if we do both, we get a lot of feedback. So I just got the camera pointed at my machine. As you can see, uh, mine's a, uh, a tired looking uh, basic, Erlbacher. That was the uh, eighth machine they made. And I put it through its paces. So I'm going to be using a 60 cylinder. Um, you know, it all kind of does the same thing. It just your math's going to be a little different on stuff. And did everybody get the uh, the sizing chart I sent? Yes. Yes. Good. So we got one. We got seven of us. So I'm going to get a glass of water and uh, head over to my sock machine and get this thing going. Yeah, I'm going to get started. So, Amy, if you could slide your computer a little bit to the left then I can see kind of your screen too. And I can see what's going on. Or if you scoot to the right a little bit, whatever. Yeah, that's good. All right, are we ready? Getting thumbs up there. <clears throat> so since you all have, can everybody hear me? Is that a yes? Yes. We good, Amy? I think we're good. All right. Since everybody has machine, you must have some basic understanding of what we're doing here. So um, I'm going to treat it like it's a beginner class, but we're going to come out with a really cool sock in the end. Um, you're going to start like you guys have never seen your machine. So it's just the rules that I follow. Um, does anybody have questions about the basic machine? Would you like me to go over that or just start knitting? Go ahead and go over it. Might as well. Uh, what? I can't hear anybody. I am. I said you might as well just go ahead and go through it like we don't know anything. Okay, good. All right. Um, the camera angle's still good. Yep. All right. So... They're a complicated, simple machine. Two screws and a nut hold the whole thing together. Man, this machine's filthy. Um, the two screws underneath is how you can change out your cylinders. This nut um, controls your V-cam, and your V-cam controls the size of your stitch. It's called a tension, but it isn't. It's how big your stitch is, how small your stitch is. The more you crank down, the bigger the stitch is, the looser the tension. There's on... We have a couple of different machines. The Laguerres have a closed cam system and the auto knitters and the Erlbachers have an open cam system where these little uplift cams here, uh, one is the leading edge and one is the following edge and it allows the needles to rise and fall. This, this uh, back, back cam is the one that makes all the noise as it rides across the needle butts. 
And that's important for when you're going to turn a heel and go backwards. Um, so there's really only that adjustment. And then there's adjustment between the, on the football. I call it the football. Is that, can you see my hands and everything, Amy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. What's that? You can move it back kind of toward you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, that's, that's better. Okay. This is the football or the yarn carrier. Um, this adjustment is important um, to get, deliver the yarn correctly into the needle so that you'll form stitches. Um, and you can't really see up here, but you guys see, you know, you have a mass topper and the heel spring and all that stuff. Um, so I've been knitting for, I think about 10 years now. Can you get to where you need to see that? Okay. Um, so I've been knitting for about 10 years. I, I taught myself how to knit from a manual from an old um, auto knitter book. It took me a long time to do it. So the, I think the most benefit you'll get out of my class is I just shortcut all of the mistakes that everybody makes and teach you how not to make them. <clears throat> so is everybody's cylinder all um, marked? Yes. Okay. Um, so it's marked at three o'clock and nine o'clock, and then your target marks for your heel. Um, I kind of look at it as a, a, a face clock and, and uh, distracted here. Okay. Jesus. I'm sorry. I've had allergy problems today and my head's a little stuffed up. So um, the biggest thing with these machines is muscle memory, doing the same thing the same way every time. Even after knitting for 10 years, I still cast on in the same place. I start and stop in the same places. I just do it all the same way and then I don't have to think about it. So I can talk and do other stuff and not worry about it. Um, how are people cast on? Do you have cast on bonnets? Or are you using the metal things or how are you getting on? I have a bonnet. Okay. So um, what I like to do is I start with my yarn carrier with the hole in the yarn carrier right over my three o'clock mark. Go ahead and do that. And then this will just weep back before it starts going backwards. So you can see the, all the exposed needles here. And you got a bunch of needles that are down here and don't worry about those. And you're gonna put your cast on bonded in and I'll get my fat fingers out of the way here in a second. And every other needle is gonna get a loop because this bonnet is made from doing a pico hem and a pico hem is just transferring other, every other stitch and then stretching out the valleys of the pico. That's why there's only half the amount of uh, loops for the needles that you're doing. And you can cast on a lot of different ways. You can use like a, a red onion sack. I'm missing my needle. Um, you can use those metal spider things, which I do not like. Um, you know, a scrunchie, you can, <clears throat> all you got to do is, all you're doing is trying to get the knitting going down through the machine. So every other one, and, and this is, your fingers are going to fight you at first until you do this a bunch of times. Then it gets easier and easier every time. Uh, so now I'm up here to where I can't see, so I just bring my yarn carrier. My hole is back over my three o'clock mark and finish hanging these bars. All right, so I've got some needles down here that I can't reach, so I need waste yarn. And I'm going to use some of this white that I've got. Uh, do you want to, does everybody know how to thread their yarn mask? Can I try this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can. Let's do this. All right, so I come up to the back. This is on the Erlbacher under the loop, through the block, over the front wire here, and under the other loop. So when we put the heel brake on, it's going to pinch the wire against the block, and then down through the front. Okay. Yeah, we make sure we're so good. That look good, sir. Go. Not too much. Right there. Is that good? 
All right, so now what I'm going to do is take my yarn through the back of the football, the front, right across my three o'clock mark and enough yarn to go across the cylinder and then drop it down inside. Now I can, with my left hand, I can grab that yarn inside the bonnet and pull down. And I want to pull down pretty good, crank forward, and it will start to knit. And now I can hang up these other bars or these other needles that were down. Now they're all hung up. Now I can just start knitting around. So this, uh, this waist yarn I'm using here is a little thinner than I would like to use, but it's the color. Um, it's a nice color that, to contrast. I like a little thinner um, waist yarn just because when you go to do the Kitchener, it's easier if it's not the same weight as your stock yarn. And so just enough rows to, to get going here. Um, and you need, uh, I did a demonstration last night and somebody asked, why do you need the waist yarn? If you don't, you're gonna knit directly onto your cast on bonnet and it will make a really funny looking sock. So um, we'll around one more time. I'm gonna stop here at three o'clock again. So I'm right, my hole is right over three o'clock and I'm gonna cut my yarn off about two inches above the yarn carrier and get my waist yarn out of the way. Um, when you're first starting out, I really recommend using a lighter colored yarn. If you start getting into blacks and navies and that kind of stuff, it's really hard to see what you're doing, especially when you go to Kitchener. So this is, uh, this is our yarn. This is our Sox yarn. Um, it's spelled S-O-X. Some of you have it and some of you don't. Um, I like 10 inches or 10 rows uh, to the inch for gauge. It makes figuring out sizing easier. Um, I like the fabric that it makes. Uh, it makes a nice comfortable sock. So now that I got this cut off here, we'll bring a yarn, our project yarn, and thread it the exact same way. Bring it down here. And one thing I'll say is that making a sock, there's really only three components to a sock. And that's, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's a, a cuff. We're gonna do some mock ribbing and a heel and a toe are done the same way. So if you break it down to just the three parts, you don't have a lot to remember really. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is take this waist yarn and I'm gonna pull it right over my three o'clock mark like that. And I'm gonna bring in my project yarn and enough yarn to go across the cylinder and I'm gonna go back uh, a needle or two, just so they're gonna, you can see that, they're gonna hug together, they're gonna knit together. That will help keep that pu from pulling out. I'll actually get two of them, which would be even easier. And then you need to put your buckle on, and the buckle goes on like this with the hole up. Put your cast on bonnet through it, and bend it down so the hole is now pointing towards the floor, and hang your stem weights. I like two weights. Um, I like the the base weight and the bigger of the other weights that come with it. Is everybody keeping pace? We good? No. What's happened? What happened? Oh, just trying to catch up with you. So okay. Let's... Yep. Does, they, does anybody have any questions so far? This is gonna be easy. <laughs> yes, I have a question. Sure. Um, we haven't. You haven't talked about tension for this for the yarn. I mean, does it? Where are you? Where are you? Where is your set? Your tension setting on the uh, the knob? Okay, um, we we're gonna get to that in just a second. But, oh well. Um, <laughs> I can you, wait. <laughs> no, what machine do you have? I got a Gearheart. Okay, um, so with the uh, a Gearheart or a Neurobacher? Sorry, it's an Aerobacher gear heart. Okay. So with my yarn, I like to be almost to the second notch from the top. Second from the top, thank you. Yeah, and what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna figure out gauge here in just a second. This is the easiest way that I found of checking gauge without having to do a separate swatch or anything like that. Because uh, on my socks, we're gonna do, do you, well, I'll ask you guys what you wanna do. On mine, I have this little detail on my cuff. 
Huh? Okay. There it is. I'm doing this from across the room. Okay. See that little detail? Um, it's like for a short tabby sock. Do you guys want to do that on your socks or you want to just do a straight cuff? Tabby. Tabby, okay. Um, it's kind of been my little signature that I do on all my socks now. Um, I do it for short ones or long ones, whatever. It's, um, you know, you can, you can decorate things up a little bit. We all caught up? Nope. Nope? Yes. All right. So uh, if you have a counter, you want to set it to zero. All right. Um, we got our weights on. We're mm -hmm. going back a couple of needles so that it's going to hug together. And before I ever start, I always look at my needles and make sure the latches are open because get this into your head. A closed latch is a drop stitch. Okay. And you're going to bend some latches. You're going to break some needle butts and all that when you're first starting out. But after a while, you'll stop doing that. But it's always a good idea to um, check your latches and check them with your eyes, not your hands. You, I, lately, I've had a lot of people that do this, trying to close the latches, and they'll spring shut. So you think you got them, and they'll spring shut. So um, all my latches look good. I'm at zero. Um, you should have a piece of paper with you and a pen too to write down your pattern. Um, I know I'm jumping a little bit, but my pattern is very simple um, that I just write down my cuff. Come on somewhere. Cuff, and then I'm going to do 50 rows of mock rib, 10 rows of um, pre-heel, and then 55 rows for the foot to make a woman's size uh, eight at, um, with my yarn at 10 rows to the inch. Okay, so just have a piece of paper there. and We'll get that part figured out as we go. So we're at zero. And what I like to do is I'm just going to hold these two ends here as I crank forward. All right, so everybody's knitting. And I'm going to do 10 rows. And I'll stop at 6 o'clock. 9, 10. So I'm going to stop right here. Go ahead and do that. I was going to say, is there any way we can put my computer on? But there isn't. He's using it. Just so I can see what they're doing. Oh. Hey, Jim, this, this is a silly question, but can you um, show how you put the belt buckle on to put the weights on? Yep. So when you first put your buckle on, um, you want to have it like that with the hole pointing up. And then okay. you're going to put your cast on bonnet in it like that with the hole pointing up, yep. pull it, pull it up a ways and then twist it. So it's pointing downward ah. and that, that has your hole pointing downward. Then you can put your stem weights right in it and you want to make sure you keep your feet out from underneath it. Okay. Oh yeah. There's no dumb questions, just dumb answers. <laughs> And how many rows are we doing? I'm sorry. We're going to do 10. You're going to do 10 rows and stop right at 6 o'clock. Oh. That, that didn't work. What happened? Um, I must not have enough weight or something lost my weights because um, my yarn all came out of my needles. Okay. Go ahead and start over again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. Um, I, one thing that I found um, teaching people is that I don't like to repair first socks, you know, because it's easier not to drop stitches. It's easier not to have things happen than it is to fix them. So it's, um, um, I think it's better to start over. It, 
it reinforces that muscle memory. It gets you doing the right thing, get your fingers working the right way. You know, you gotta, yeah, there's no hurry. Um, we can all chat amongst ourselves while you get going again. Um, we've got two hours to do this and I'm yeah, available. Sure. I'm available, you know, to talk to anybody afterwards. You know, if you get frustrated and have to stop, that's okay. We'll, we'll make it up on another time. Yeah. Um, I'm so, a little slow, so you can go on. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So everybody else, what you want to do now is you want to take your weights off. Who's, who's starting over again? I can't see names. Um, it's Victoria. I'm going to start again because I dropped a stitch. Okay. So, um, yep. No worries. So everybody else, uh, what we're going to do, and I'll get you caught up, Victoria, is these 10 rows, it works out nice to measure for gauge right now. Um, because you only have the 10 rows, it's not going to be weird counting and hard to see sometimes when you're trying to count multiple rows. So I've got this little fancy um, textile counter that does, that's an inch right there. So I can put it right here without my weights on with my, at the top of the cylinder to my knitting and I'm just about 10. So go ahead and check your gauge and make sure you're where you want to be. Hey, Jim. Yeah. How do you get the knitting off? When I try to do, I cut the yarn and move my, my crank, it doesn't come off the needles. Okay, so pull down as you're doing it. Pull down with your left hand on your cast on bonnet. Ah, thank you so much. Is everybody getting engaged? No, I'm at three quarters of an inch for 10 rows. Three quarters of an inch for 10 rows. It means it's tight. So what, uh, what machine are you using? Uh, Erlbacher Arlbach Gearheart. Okay, so is your, where's your setting on your, on your uh, cam shell, on your, uh, on your V-cam? Let's see. I'm just below the second line from the top. Okay, so give it a, uh, another crank or two down. Down, okay. Down, down is looser. It's counterintuitive, but it's down is forming a bigger stitch. Okay, that, I think I got it. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of uh, heel turning here, and then when we get to, what we're going to do is we're going to do 10 rows, and then we're going to do a, a reduction of five needles, an increase of five needles, and then crank another 10 rows, so you can get gauge on that second 10. Make sense? Oh, yep. Sounds good. Okay. Are we good to keep going or? Does everybody look like they're working? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So now, um, Victoria, you almost caught up? No, no, I'm casting on. Okay. Keep going. I'll... Okay. Uh, this is being recorded too. Excellent, and thank so, you. So it will be recorded, and then we've also um, have a YouTube page and a Patreon page, and we put up a video yesterday of a sock right from start to finish. Um, did anybody come to our virtual crank in? Didn't know I there was one. Was the YouTube one. page? Yes, I did. Oh, good. Yeah, that uh, was so, the one. I was the one who couldn't make it because it's because it was on a Jewish holiday. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, what's the YouTube? No, that, wasn't, that wasn't on purpose, it's just uh, when it happened. Yeah, we're, gonna do another, we're gonna do another one, we think, in February, um, when the weather's a little crappier because we had a lot of people sign up, but then it was a nice weekend. Um, so we've done two of them now, and our first one was more uh, beginner stuff. We had speakers from all over the world. Um, we got you know, different techniques and then the different manufacturers of machines and that kind of stuff. And then this next, the last one we did probably a month ago was um, some more advanced stuff, um, some more uncommon stuff to do with the machines and some different manufacturers. And so the next one will probably be uh, a mix of that kind of stuff too. Um, so if anybody has anything they want to see or do, you know, send us a line. And uh, all of the videos are on their way up on YouTube on the Good Karma Farm 
YouTube page and you can go check them out there. So now that we've got the 10 rows done, uh, I've got to put our weights back on. That's another one of the, the, the steepest parts of the learning curve is to always remember to not have your weights on, but at least have weight on the machine, be it with your hands or whatever. Because if you don't, you're gonna have what Victoria had where it turns and turns and doesn't do anything or it pukes the yarn back up off the machine. Um, either way, it's not a, a good look for a sock. So we've done 10 rows where, and mostly at gauge, I believe. And what we're gonna do now is you can take your half moon key and we're gonna take the needles out of work from three o'clock to nine o'clock, just like that. They just pop right up. The uh, needle butts will hit the spring and that's when you know you're up far enough. So this is just, this is basically just a really short heel um, because you have your, your three o'clock and nine o'clock marks and then you have your target marks down here for your heel. We're only gonna go five rows or five needles. So it's, you know, it's just a short heel. Um, so with the, with the gear hearts or any machine, you're gonna click, you're gonna go until it stops clicking and that clicking is happening right there. That uplift cam is riding on the needle butts making that noise. So when I get all the way by here and it stops clicking, that means that this following uplift cam is going to be the leading uplift cam coming back the other way. So um, Amy, I'm gonna need you to do another photo up here. So I've gone by, now I'm gonna raise this needle up. And if I try to go backwards yet, I can't go because there's no tension on there. So go ahead and lift that up. So I'm gonna bring my heel spring in front. So now this is what you're looking for, that it's pinching the yarn against the block. And that gives you the tension here to allow you to go back and forth. And if it doesn't look like that, it's not gonna work. Okay. Uh, yep, okay. maybe towards you just a tad. No, by the way. Okay. okay. Okay, everybody with me so far? How about if everybody unmutes and then I can hear you? There's only a few of us in here, so it's not so bad. <clears throat> so now I can go backwards. I What's that? Looks different than yours. What's that? My heel spring looks different than yours. Okay, what cut? You have a Laguerre? No, I have an Earl Backer Gearheart. How does it look different? I don't know. Mine has like a small circle. Yours has a V, it seems. But okay, does it, it has a block and a wire, though, correct? Yeah. yeah. Can I see a picture of it? I can't really get closer. Um, it's like a triangle at the top. Which one? I don't know how to get it closer. Oh, can you get it a little closer? I can't. I can't move it any closer. Take a picture, I guess. It looks like you might have it on backwards. This is on backwards, and this should be on the bottom. No, I, I, I can't really see it. Let's say. Let's see. That's what it looks like on top. Oh God, it's backwards. backwards. It's backwards. Okay. Does it look like this one? Yeah, no, it's the same thing. You're going backwards though, because you want it to, on the back of the screen. It's going to have the two circles and feeding one circle into the cylinder. So take your yarn right out. Okay, now take both hands and turn the whole yarn carrier 90 degrees. No, just the top part. I, I don't get it. Okay, uh, stop. The, the yarn carrier is you have two two ends feeding into the one end, correct? I don't know uh, what that means, two ends. Okay, hold on a sec. Okay. Amy, gonna have to help guide me here. Hang on. All right, can you see that? Yeah. See how the double are to the back of the machine and the single is to the front? 
Yeah. Okay, yours are going the other way, correct? Oh, no, I have the two back here and the one here. I'm good. That's the same. Okay. So this is all different. That's what is? Just weird. But up top, that heel spring is heel spring right here. Configuration. But I think sure. it works the same. Does it come? Do you have a block here like this? Mm, not really. A block <laughs> here. You know, maybe mine's only a few months old, and then I ended up moving out of my house, so I haven't touched it since I moved out. I just moved back in. So well, just go ahead. And I'll see how you so maybe they change their configuration. Yeah, you should uh, I want to go back over there. Let me uh, see if I can. It's okay. Uh, it's And right there. Right there. Yeah, right here. So, but it's not pressing against the block. No, it seems, you know, when, when this pulls, this thing goes up and down. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and. Okay, well, do you have tension on your yarn to be able to turn? I have tension on the yarn. I'm just okay. adding more. Okay, right, that's what matters. Hey, Jim. Yes. Can you look at mine? I have a lagar. I don't know if you can see it. And I have no idea how to make it work. One of those goopy ones. It's what? One of those goopy ones. It is goofy. Yeah. Uh, she's right here. Pam oh, okay. Lawrence, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, oh, you're okay. So this, the, the wire part can stick it up. Just pull that down. Yeah. And then put the yarn in it. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't really did you, under, did you go under that little silver sleeve? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is it, is it giving you tension? Not really, but that was my problem. I was fighting with it all morning. It doesn't okay. really. The spring doesn't really work. No, it it, uh, it is there a spring on the on the on the on the pole? Yeah, there's a spring on the pole right here. Pull that down. Pull it all the way down. See, then it goes backwards. Right, you can pull that down, and that's what's going to give you your tension. But then it sticks up in the air. Is that how it's supposed to be? Straight up in the air? Uh, pull it a little bit forward. You want to hook your yarn in it, and you can pull your spring down to get some tension on it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. So, one of the most important things you're doing here is to remember to do your needles before you do something else. So, if you're raising them or lowering them, do it before you move your heel weights or anything else like that. The, you know, because the doorbell rings or whatever, and then you don't remember where you are. So I go by, I raise that needle, put on my heel spring, and now I'm going to come back the other way. I'm going to raise that needle. What you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. All right. So now we're just going to go back again. Raise this needle. And you're going to watch your knitting is going to start to rise up a little bit. And that's when the heel forks come in. And I hope you all have heel forks because this is the easiest way that I've found um, to do this. And I take my, my center fork and I'll put it right in the middle about, well, right about where my waist yarn is. And that will pull that straight down. And then I'm going to put my next one in. I'm going to take the center and my last needle out of work and divide that space up and put the, the weight in there and do the same on the other side. And if you do this correctly, you'll never drop a heel stitch unless your yarn carrier is not where it's supposed to be. So I don't know if you can see inside here, but my middle ones and my two side ones, you know, they're divided from this space up. Now we're going back the other way again. So that's two on this side. Back here. That's three. I'll do the same on this side. So that's three. Four. 
four. This is five on the right. Come around, now I'm five on the left. All right, you have to finish on the left-hand side or you're gonna be going backwards afterwards, okay? Um, I'm gonna stop for a second, let everybody catch up. That's the end of my decrease for the tab. So give a yell whenever you're ready to move forward. Um, Tim, this is Victoria. Um, so I was just starting, I'm raising all of the stitches in the back from from my three, nine to three position. Nine Correct. Three. Okay, yep. thanks. You've, you've done your 10 rows. Yep. Yep. Thank you. And this gets easier every time you do it. And I'm not a hand knitter at all. So um, I don't have any idea how that works, like taking notes and all of that. And I only use one yarn too, which is kind of, <laughs> I don't know what that is. But I made one yarn that I like and that's, you know, we're all wearing those socks today. And um, people always ask about the river. And I'm a firm believer of put your river away until you know how to make a sock. Because you got enough to remember just doing this part, much less having a river timed and working correctly. Um, they're not hard, but it's just one more thing, which slows down your learning curve. Um, in fact, this, is, uh, this has been my go-to machine forever. Um, this is the eighth machine that the Earlbockers made. I got into this. Uh, we were at a show in Springfield, Massachusetts, and I saw one of these machines. It wasn't an Earlbocker. It was uh, an uh, it was a And I knew the vendors, and I went and talked to them, and I asked if I could try it. And they said, "Yep." And then, you know, it started me down this path, and I wanted to find one. And, you know, this is like I said, this is the eighth machine they made, so they weren't readily available. And um, so we had a friend that had a yarn store and she ended up having a stroke and she had a machine and we made a, a deal on it. And it was an old auto knitter and it was a Franken machine that was a bunch of different parts. And so it didn't run great. And it took me forever to teach myself how to knit on it. Um, Cause I didn't know what I didn't know. And so having a yarn company is like, well, this will be easy. I'll just, you know, go through whatever we got. And that was probably the hardest thing because my stitch size was always off from one yarn to the next or tension, however you want to put it. Um, Amy. So um, that was a slow part. And then trying to rib with a machine that didn't work, I got a really a lot of hula in it. And, um, you know, it would knit one side great and then drop stitches on the other side. And I just, you know, I just didn't care for the river. And I didn't care for the, the socks. And so I came up with my own pattern of what I liked. And my socks look different than everybody else's out there. And I don't even use my river ever. I can do it. Um, I'm not great at it, especially if I get an old machine in and trying to get the ripper going on it. You know, Amy and I can work on it together and make it happen. We did that with a machine the other day. So I just got a new machine. I'm gonna, I don't, I'll show it at the end. But the Earlbockers made me another machine with no attachments for rivers at all. It's all nice and smooth and clean. And it's my personal taste. You know, if you wanna use a river, that's great. But you gotta walk before you run. All right, has everybody done their decrease? Huh? Okay, so now we're gonna start the increase. What we're gonna do is, I'm kind of a left-hand knitter too, is I'm not pulling down on these weights, but I'm resting my hand on them to just give just a little bit more pressure and I don't have to move my weights as often. Um, and just it keeps my hands occupied. So we're gonna go, 
back around so it stops clicking. And now I'm gonna put two needles down. And the way I like to do it is I'll actually put my finger inside of the latches like that and push down and my thumb is gonna bottom out on the top of the cylinder, all right? Then I'm gonna put the yarn behind it like so and make sure my latches are open. So it's two needles down, yarn behind, latches open. All right, once you do that, you're gonna come back the other way, making sure that it's gonna catch. And this is where you'll find out whether or not your yarn carrier is in the right place. So it's just gonna come backwards, two needles down, yarn behind, latches open. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go back the other way, and it's gonna be one needle down. So it's one needle down. It's only two to start back up again. So it's one needle down, yarn behind, latches open. Needle down, yarn behind, latches open. You'll have that in your, be hearing that in your sleep tonight. Needle down, yarn behind, latches open. So what I'm doing now is going back to the three three o'clock and nine o'clock. This is a good chance. You can see that the knitting is starting to ride up just a little bit here. I'll move my center weight up first. So I'm about an inch and a half, two inches below the top of the cylinder. And then do the same with my side needles again, dividing the space up in half of the last needle out of work and my middle needle. Okay. And I'd already done my needle, so I don't have to worry about whether I did it or not do it. And back around again. And now when I put this needle down, I'm back to how I started on the right-hand side. I'm back to my three o'clock mark. Yarn behind, latches open. I'm back here. Needle down, yarn behind, latch open. So this is where we started from. And then I come back. When I come back this time, I'm going to stop at six o'clock. So this is right where we started when we pulled the needles up out of work. It was right here. So we just, we, you know, it's a fold over, so it's half. Let me know when everybody's caught up. Hi, Jim. Huh? It, it's Victoria. Yep. I seem to be I don't know why it's happening, but the yarn isn't catching. Okay, so, so that's going to be that's going to be your um, yarn carrier. So let me come over and take a look at your. Victoria. Can't see where you're going to get it. Just a second, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's what, all right. So you have your screwdriver there, right? No. <laughs> okay, we're going to need the screwdriver because you're going to need to move your yarn carrier in just a little bit. So okay. fill up that screwdriver. All right. I'll go grab one. Thanks so much. Oh. So it just needs to, a smidge in. Oh, that's a that's an end zag. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, you you need your yarn to be close to your yarn care close to your needles. I can use this. You want the yarn to be delivering almost right into the latches. At the base of the latch. All right, I pushed in. I haven't tightened it. I want to see if this is going to. So you want to tighten it. How are you doing, Christine? 
I dropped five stitches and I just got them back rehung and I'm going to start my uh, continue with my decreases. It's Dave, by the way. What's that? It said it's Dave, by the way. Yeah. Good. I was kind of enjoying calling you Griffin, though. <laughs> okay. You have your race on, uh, Victoria? Yeah. No, not Victoria. You can stop spotlighting. <laughs> okay. Did that work? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. I'm just going to make sure everybody's caught up. Dave, why did you drop the stitches? Do you know? No, I got them back on. Um, I think I'm ready to continue with my decreases. Well, why did they drop? Uh, because the uh, these weren't high enough. Okay. I don't like them up real high. You know, you want to be an inch and a half or so down lower. So, Renee, are you uh, knitting on your flatbed? Kim, when the heel forks are, are uh, uh, lower down, is that a more even distribution of weight? Well, it's what you're looking for is you want the knitting to be pulled down straight. So if you're knitting with your regular stem weights on, you can see there's even pressure all the way around the cylinder. When you start to knit um, the heels, you're not knitting it around, so it starts to slope in, and you're trying to get it to be even. So it, saying where you put them is not the right way to do it. You got to look at what it's doing that it's pulling the knitting straight down. Does that make sense? Oh. Does that explanation make sense? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Okay. We've got the computer set up, you know, 10, 15 feet away from where I'm knitting this, so can't always hear everything. You guys all tell me when you get to where I'm at. Where are you? And do you want me to talk while you're working or just be quiet while you do it? <laughs> Guess I'd answer that. <laughs> uh, just a quick question. Sorry, sure. Victoria again. So, yep. so I just need a mnemonic to help remember this. Um, so when I'm decreasing and I'm moving from um, from the back to the front, going uh, from my right to my left, I'm raising this the needle on the right yes you're taking a needle out of work and you're only working on the side that your yarn is feeding on okay so where where the yarn is coming that's where i raise and if i'm moving to the from the left to right i'm raising the left well on your on your decrease uh yes okay yes. okay i'll get to the increase in, in a bit but okay thanks Mm -hmm. So 
So I was gonna talk a little bit about maintenance on the machine. Um, and I don't do a lot of it, obviously, as my machine is a, a mess. Um, I think they run a little better with a little gook in them. Uh, I think that the, some of the lint will hold some of the oil. I don't like to oil them so that it's dripping out of them. Um, I think that's a little overkill. The machine will tell you when it needs oil. As groovy as that sounds, it's true. You can feel it. You know, you'll feel the difference immediately when you put it in. If you over oil them, you're going to get oil on your yarn. You get oil on your floor. You get oil on your hands. Um, and that's our dog. She's having a gilly moment. She's a French bulldog that likes to bark into pillows. And so when I do oil it, I'll just put a bead of oil along the needle butts. And I'll do that probably uh, once every 10, 15 socks or pairs of socks. And then another one a little down the line, I'll run a bead right along the retention spring so that it runs down into the slots on the cylinder. Um, and you can see I got some fuzz right here coming out. And you know, it's no big deal. It doesn't affect anything. Um, as far as cylinders go, I only use the one. There's people that have cylinders for this and for cylinders for that. Um, I just have, I just use a 60 on all my machines. That's what I like. Um, I'm, I'm not an accomplished knitter. I can knit what I knit well, but I don't knit a lot of different things. So I, I don't have a lot of call for multiple cylinder use. So I'm starting over because, yeah, I just lost a whole bunch and it just didn't work. So I'm just going to go ahead and start over. Okay. Now, do you think that's your yarn carrier is not in the right place? If you're dropping stitches like that? I noticed that the uh, it, it was rising up, which means I needed to push down um, on the inside. Okay. And can you see right now, it's kind of focused on my yarn carrier. You can see where the yarn is delivering into the, the needle. See it right there? It's hitting right into the last. That's where you want it, height-wise. And, you know, they talk about online that it needs to be a credit card width. Mine's not that close. Um, but this is what you want. This right here, I have no problems with this setting right here as far as um, the yarn carrier. But if you're dropping stitches going back and forth, it's probably yarn carrier. It's also weight, but yarn carrier would be my first suspect. I'm having that problem too where it's dropping stitches. So where should the yarn carrier be? Because mine's okay, just you, add above the needle when it's at its tallest. Okay. If you look at my machine right now, my picture, oh. you see what, huh? Yes. Okay. So the yarn is it's feeding in. See this yarn right here? Mm -hmm. it's, it's hitting right into the latch. Boom. So that's where you want it to be. That's where you want it to be delivered. As far as height goes, you can see here too that this one, this needle right here is at the height of its pass. And you can see where that is in relation to the hole. Oh. And that hole is probably, I'm probably an eighth of an inch back. Okay. And that's the most frustrating thing about these machines is that you think you got it all right and then some dumb little things happen and it's like, why is it happening? And it's a simple little adjustment like that. Okay. Thank you. No, no worries. But you got to really watch what your machine is doing. You know, the, it, will t it will tell you what, it's a complicated, simple machine. It only goes around and around and up and down. And you've only got a couple of basic um, adjustments that you can make with it too. So you can get pretty symbiotic in a hurry.
And everybody take your time. If you're ahead, then just relax for a minute. Jim, one of my needles, yeah, I dropped all of my stitches. I have no idea why. And <laughs> I tried to redo it. And one of my needles is sticking out. And I don't know how to pop it back in. All right. Yeah. I'm coming around. Well, I don't know how to show it to you. Um, again. I don't even know how I did this. I'm going to try to, I don't know if you can see that. You see how it's sticking out? Okay. Uh, is the yarn carrier right in the way of it? Yarn carrier is past it. Okay. Can you lift the needle up? I can't do anything with it. Well, is it like jam? Yeah. Can you go by with your yarn carrier at all? No, it, it just hits, it makes a noise and stops at the counter. I can't go forward or back. So that needle is jammed in. Okay, you gotta try and pull that needle out. And then it's, uh, they go in just by the needle, the butt goes into the spring. Right. So actually look ahead of where your yarn carrier is and those uplift jams are you jamming somewhere up there. Huh. It's like the yarn carrier hitting one of the needle butts of the needles that are out. Do you have needles out of work? Yeah. I that's the only one that looks off. Did it come out? No, I'm going to have to, you know, go on with them and try to figure out what I've done. I just wish I could see a little closer to your machine. Yeah, I can't pick the thing up, though, so. What are you recording with? I'm on a computer. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's just, you know, so well, I, I can I'm see gonna put that the string, what, I mean, this, this cord, like this string covered cord is butted out around it. I a picture of it. Yeah. Know. How about if you uh, email us a picture of it or, or, um, I, I, I'm, I am just, I'm beyond frustrated. I'll just, I'm going to just watch what you do. And okay, that's that's okay. And uh, it's okay. We will we'll get you going. Don't worry. You've got a pink lady, right? Okay. That's a pink lady machine, right? I don't know what a pink lady is. I'm sorry. Is it pink or red? No, it's red. Okay, so that's a speedster. Like I said, I I got it. You know, five six months ago, I moved out. I haven't touched it since I came back. You know. And I'm going to just have to cut the thing out of here. I don't know how to remove it. No, 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 no. Don't do that. I don't know how to remove it out of it. We'll get you, we'll get you squared away. But if you could take a picture of it and uh, send us a picture and um, let's see. If you could send it to jim at goodcomerfarm.com, I can take a look at it. It's not as tricky as you think it is, but I don't know exactly what to tell you. And Grace, you're looking for a, a machine, right? I have, um, I have, uh, 
an automatic yeah. that was working um, when I bought it, but it was all sort of put in a box. And so I haven't, I'm such a okay. newbie. And I have, I, and since then I've also bought uh, two others but with parts. Like I have so many different parts. I thought at least I've got something as a backup. Okay. What happened, David? I got the uh, the first half of the uh, uh, raising of the, the the stitches, and then I just dropped eight in a row, and it dropped it right off the whole hem. The same way as before. Different spot. Um, no, the the difference. The other, last time it was it just didn't stitch, so I had a piece of yarn there which I was able to redo. This just dropped all these right off. Okay. I'm sure this is error on my part. Well, you know, don't be afraid to be a beginner. You're going to make mistakes. It's kind of like learning to play a musical instrument. I mean, I, I, I don't have an issue cranking tubes. It's when I get to this point where you're dropping, taking needles out and putting them back in, that's where I always have issues with dropping stitches or stuff like this. Okay, so how many rows did you get? How many needles did you get to take out of work before you dropped them? Or did you get all of them? Well, I, I did the between six and nine. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, three and three and three and nine. Oh, out. Three and nine. Then I put the five back in um, one at a time. Oh no, wait, we're taking five out? No. Okay. Yep, we're gonna take five out. Yeah, so I got the last one out, and as I crank it around, the last one did not did not stitch. Okay, so you gotta watch that. You gotta go slow going back, make sure it's gonna pick up before you go forward. Yep. Did you get it, Kathy? Did you get the needle out? I, I don't know how to get the needle out. Okay, Here, here's what you're gonna do, all right? Um, you got to take off your tension knob on the V-cam, the brass knob. Okay. You take that off, and you should be able to, it's going to come out hard, but you should be able to get that out. This, you mean? The V-cam. No. All right, I'm going to go back to me. Oh, and yes. so uh, this is your V-cam right here, the big, okay. fat-looking thing. Okay. You got to take the brass knob off of it. And then that whole V cam will come up. It's not going to come up easy because it's jammed, okay. but it will come up and you'll be able to move those needles around. Oh, I see. <clears throat> How's yours going, Rachel? Karen, you doing good? <laughs> The problem I usually have is uh, at this point is when the the needles in the back we put those all back in service. That is when I usually find that I that stitches drop. So I'm a little nervous about when we put those back into service. Nope, I know exactly what you're doing wrong. So what am I doing? You're just pushing needles down. We're gonna do that in just a minute here. Okay, I'll wait. So I have this knob off. Yep. And. The bat thing needs to come up. It's going to come up hard. Oh, okay. Take the whole thing off. Take the whole thing off. You should be able to move needles around. Okay. But this won't move. Don't crank it. Don't crank it. Okay. Just pull the pull the V cam out. The, the spring and everything? You don't need the spring out. Now you can get to the, the needle that's trapped behind it, right? Yeah. Right. Right. You, now, can you get to the needle that's trapped? Yeah, it's right before it, but I can't pull it out. Maybe I need a claw. Mm. Sure, I'm bending it, but you know, I have extras. Yep. I, no, I can't even get a grip on it. Find some pliers or something. It needs to come out. <laughs> Renee, does this uh, look easier than flatbed knitting? <laughs> no.
no. <laughs> It's just a learning curve, you know. You got agreed, Renee. I agree. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So, Jim, this is Pam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was my yarn guide, it seems to be. So, I was able to get my bonnet to work this time, except for it dropped two stitches, but it corrected itself. Is it okay to go on with the waist yarn? Absolutely. Like, it's way short. It has nothing to do with anything. But being that I dropped two of the cast on stitches, I have rings on my bonnet, which seems to be a problem too. Yeah, get rid of those. Now, um, on our, I keep promoting our YouTube page, but I did a whole video the first time of how to make a cast on bonnet. And it's yeah. a great exercise because you don't have to make a match. And it's got all the elements of the sock. Yeah. Mine, I do, I do the mock ribbing on my cast on bonnets. Just because it's everything that's part of a sock. Okay. And you don't have to make a match. And they don't have to fit. But you're getting you're getting your hands doing the process of, the, of it. Okay. So if you've got the rings on, just do a couple extra rows of waste yarn. Yep. I mean, it looks good for, you know, 10, 10 rows here. It's all yep. no holes or anything. So I can continue on. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And we're just, we're doing 10 rows? 10 rows, like, and then do a reduction for five rows. Or if you don't want to do the reduction now, you can also just do 20 rows and we'll hang a cup that way. Okay. Without the tab. Well, every needle came off of it. <laughs> so this will be fun. Um, but I think, you know, I could put it back together at some point. Mm -hmm. But the... Um, this seems to be damaged. There's like a, a hole right there. You'll be all right. You'll be all right unless it's not broken. <laughs> no, you actually, you were given an extra one of those when you got I your was. machine. I was. But so you I, can put that one back in. They take a lot of abuse before they're not usable anymore. Okay, so I have to put everything back on and then put the spring back on, I guess. Put the spring on first. Really? Okay. Yep. okay. Now, also, listen. On the on your cam shell, there's a thing called the Miss Jenny's something or other. On your cam shell, um, you know this part here. Okay. You got something called the Miss Jenny's. Just a square up block with a little groove in it. I can't quite see. I want to see if I can. I don't know what what you're talking about. So it's okay. Okay. You want to put your spring on first, and then you can take your pick tool and put it in on the grooves and pull the spring out a little bit to put a needle in. And then once you get one in, you can pull the top of that needle out a little bit to get the next one to go in easy. Okay. Okay, just go ahead. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, we ready to move forward? Where are you at, David? Uh, I'm going to just do 20 and then uh, catch up to you from there. Okay, great. Everybody else good? Okay, I'm gonna go back to the spotlight, speaker view. So, um, so this is where you're, this is where um, we're gonna put these needles back into work. Rachel, this is where you were having your problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take, I, like I said, I like to put my finger right inside the needle like that and just drop two at a time. Your finger will bottom out the top of the cylinder. Two at a time, two at a time. There's no hurry here. Two at a time. Put them all down. Because uh, here's a part of the quiz. What is a closed latch? Drop stitch. So you want to put all those down and you want to make sure all your latches are open and are any of your hand knitters or socks? Yes. Yeah. Right. You know the hole you get in the corner of the heel? Yeah. That's right here. This will be a hole right here. But there's a double stitch right here. I grab half of that, drag it up. You don't have to do this. But that will take that hole out.
we're going to go over two hours if everybody's cool with that. I don't think we can do. Is everybody good with that? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, you check out whenever you want to. Like I said, it will be recorded. That sounds dry. Who's that? That's me. Who said that? Pam. Pam? Yeah, I think my darn guide is still messed up. Okay. Yeah, I see that pull down pressure. Um, seems to be balking on my um, can't get it to show on the weight of the yarn. Yeah. I can't, I can't get it there. So I don't uh, know. I well, wait, 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 wait. Your heel spring is way to the back. Are you trying to go backwards? I'm just trying to knit 10, 10 rows and I got to give up again. I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get the camera. Um, trying to get to my guide. This isn't working going in the air. Yeah, those aren't my favorite yarn guides, mass toppers. Yeah, I'm struggling with it. But I think my yarn guide is too close to my needles. Okay. Well, with those, you don't have a lot of adjustment, right? It's either up or down. There's no in or out. That's true. So go up maybe a little bit. Okay, thank you. All right, so the ones, you good, David? All right, uh, Rachel and Karen, you guys caught up? All right, here we go. So if you hang it, you want to take your heel spring off now because that will change your tension on your, on your knitting. Take your heel spring off, and again, check, double check, triple check that all your latches are open, and do it with your eyes, not your hands. If you find one closed, then open it, but don't, don't flick them. All right. So this is when, when I'm starting, I'll keep my left hand right here. And, oh, you want to set your counter back to zero again. But I'll keep my left hand here that if you were to drop a stitch, you could press it right against the sidewall and catch it before it runs. So um, I'm going to go nice and slow. My heel spring is off. All my latches are open. And I'm going to do 10 rows, and we're going to stop at 3 o'clock. You want to make sure you leave all your heel forks on, all your weights are on. Okay. And now uh, you're going to take your heel forks out. We're going to hang the cuff now. Heel forks are coming out. The stem weight's coming off. Everybody with me so far? that all I'm sorry was that all of the the weights off or just the heel for yep everything off thank you leave your buckle you can leave your buckle on but the rest of it comes off oh Everybody there? Okay. So we're going to do, 
this is why you want a good contrasting color of waste yarn and project yarn. I'm going to reach inside here, get my fat fingers out of the way, and I want to roll this up, okay, so I can see my first row of project yarn and my last row of waste yarn. And I'm going to get it going as straight as I can. I'm trying to get my hands out of the way. And I'm doing this at the 12 o'clock position. So I can see my first row of project yarn here. I'm going to hang on the corresponding needle up above it. All right? And I'm going to go around. And I like to get as many of these right now as I can. So that way I'll know I'll be going straight. And you can tell because you're knitting, you're going to see it's either going to be straight or it's going to be on an angle. So you want to hang as many of these up as you can. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got eight of them hung. So I know I'm going to be straight. And then all I got to do is the one that you got to watch for is that you don't pull your knitting off down here on the lower needles that are um, that are down in the down inside the cylinder. So I can just come over here now and this is a better angle I think that I can pick up. I try to work as most best I can as the, the way the yarn is going. So here I have to go backwards a little bit. But I'm just going to take this one my first row of project yarn. That's my project yarn. That's my waste yarn. Just hang that bar up right in order and uh, you got two ends on your your tool so you can do both whichever one is easiest for you and i'm just going to keep going backwards make sure you only get one layer of it And now I'm getting back to here where the yarn carrier is in the way. Again, that will weep back without knitting anything. So I can get a few more of these. Thank you, Sean. Yep. Thank you. And it's going to get a little bit goofy here at the three o'clock mark where we had the two tails coming in. But you, know, you can. It becomes pretty clear. All right, so that's the last one I can reach on this side. So now I just bring my yarn back up here, making sure that this one's gonna catch. And now I'll come over to this side and start hanging up. Take them outside. I'm just going to keep going until I get to where my needles are down. Couple more here. I don't know where you guys are at in this, but what I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down hard with my left hand and then advance machine until these needles pop up. And then just hang the rest of the bars.
that was on purpose. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Everybody else done? This is where your fingers have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. So Renee, were you able to put the needles back into work successfully? No, I don't have a machine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I met Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Renee, if you need a machine, I can help you out. Yes, okay. no, drop, no drop stitches. I'm just finishing up. Uh, I'm just finishing my loops right now. Great. Did you get it back together, Kathy? It's, um, it seems to be jammed between like two inches there and it just won't go forward, it won't go back. So I can't get all the needles back in. So it's more than just whatever I thought it was. Okay, did you break a needle butt or anything? I don't think so. I have all the needles. I don't have any broken parts. Okay. Yeah. I have four that aren't in. One, two, three. That's funny. I have four and I only see three empty spaces. Which is weird. Huh? Oh, no. Here's, here's a couple Good of empty spaces. I don't know if I have a butt, but like I say, I can't go... It won't go past the yarn counter. Okay, is it jamming on the yarn? Did your yarn counter move? Well, it did. It says 54. No, but I mean, did the whole thing move? Is it jamming against it? Is the, um, the, the trigger mechanism on the yarn carrier, is that hitting something else that's stopping it from moving? I can't tell. I'm sorry. It won't go either direction? It goes like two inches back and forth, and that's it. You have all the needles back in? No, I can't get all of them back in. Okay, yet. but you have a bunch of them in. Oh, I have almost everything in. I'm missing. Okay, so now pull those needles up out of work. All of them? Yep. Okay. And see if the machine will move then. Learning the machine is learning how to troubleshoot it. Absolutely. Yeah. Ah, this one won't come up. That's your problem. Okay, what? What's is it under something? Oh no. What's keeping it down? Is it down first? No, I so said what's keeping it down? Um it looks like it's against this triangle thing. Oh, okay, I got that up. Okay. We're going to make noise for just a second. Go ahead and dump okay. it. Oh, okay. How are you doing, Pam? Sorry, I was on mute. Struggling. Yep. With what? Oh, just, I don't know what's wrong with my yarn carrier that it keeps, it seems to be misaligned and dropping. And okay, so with those, the yarn comes up through the back and then goes under that little clamshell thing. Oh, I'm sorry, I said yarn carrier. I'm sorry, use the wrong term. The, the, oh. Uh, oh, the yarn carrier, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the topper. My bad. No, not where the, you know, the football. Yep. And my machine is quite weird because it doesn't have a lot of room. It has no room. It's like too short to um, align it. All right. I don't know if you can see. See how it's got, uh, got no room. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, try backing it down. Yeah, I think it needs to be up. I gotta say, let me see the top where it is uh, with relation to the needles. Okay, hold on. Takes me a while with this camera. Can you, oh, you're not seeing anything. That. Can you see? It's gonna go this way. Yeah, I'd drop it down a little bit. 
Would you? Yeah, why okay. not? Okay. If it's not working going up, try it going down. Okay. I mean, that's really how you learn. Needles. I'm snacking as we're doing this. You got your hem, hem, hem done, Karen? Breezing through this, huh? What? I'm not, I'm not, you don't bother me, but I can put headphones on. It's not, it's not other people, not you, not us. Would you go up and grab my... Those will work in your machine, right? No, go, would you get, grab mine? I can, I'm going to get some headphones so everybody else in the family can enjoy their day, too. So, Karen, what are you using for a cylinder? You mean the number of stitches? Yeah. yeah. 64. 64, okay. And what about you, Rachel? You muted. Yeah, unmuting. 64. Okay. So we need to figure out the math. So my 60 cylinder, I'm going to put in my headphones here. Probably be yelling here. Um, I'm going to do a three by one mock rib. So maybe you guys should do a two by one. That would be easy math. Okay. No, so, wait, you're, you're doing a three by one, so that's a repeat of four, right? Uh, is it? Well, if it is, then a 64 is only four more needles than a 60, so there shouldn't really be any difference in the math. It's, well, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I'm wrong, but... <laughs> Again, I only use the one cylinder, so I've never figured it out for different ones. You caught up, David? Or are you just watching? All along and standing by. Nice. All right, are we ready to move forward? Everybody good? And I'm using a 72. All right, so you got to figure out your math too. But I'll show you what we're going to do, and then we can go from there. Uh, speaker view. OK. So uh, we're all hung, and we should be somewhere up in the top here. Right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, and stop over here at three o'clock. All right? Now, that's where it's going to get fun. We're going to take this stitch here at nine o'clock. I'm going to grab that stitch right at the base of the needle. And I'm going to grab it and pull it out. I'm going to transfer it to the next one closer to me and take that needle right out. We go one, two, three, take the fourth stitch, transfer it over, take that one out. So there's my three by one. And it's going to continue around doing that, taking every fourth one. And again, you got to do whatever the math works out. You could do this any number that you want. And if you need to advance the machine, make sure you pull down before you try and crank. And you can use your left hand to manipulate um, the sock underneath to give you more tension, less tension, whatever you need to do. It's weird now that I put the headphones in, now I've got like a two second delay on the video, which is kind of weird.
Is that too much light? Is it washing stuff out? And don't forget to take the needles out of the machine after you transfer the stitch, because it will pick the knitting up. Again, I got our advanced machine, pull down, crank forward. So are you doing this every three stitches, transferring it? Yes, every fourth needle I'm pulling out. Kathy, did you get him to come out? I did. I'm gonna to try to like restart. Yeah, good. So you got you got it unjammed at least, and you didn't break yes. anything. Yes, thank you. Half the battle. <laughs> Hey, Jim. Yes. This is Renee. Why are you pulling out every fourth needle? What's We're the doing purpose? the mock rib. We're going to do a mock rib. Okay. So this will, let's see if this sock will show it better. Um, no. Can you see it there? It, oh, gives us a, a, it gives the sock a little bit more structure I see. without having to deal with the river. Okay. And uh, it's a little more form fitting. Okay. Looks good. It does. And it holds up. Otherwise, you have straight stocking net, and it's just going to bang. OK. Oh, I like it. Tell me when to go again. I've got my I find bourbon helps us too. Jim? Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe I'm pulling up the wrong thing, but when you're picking up and hanging the hem, do you have have you had problems um with the stitches as you're going around getting tighter? and harder to loop through, or am I doing something wrong? Do you have your weights off? I have my weights off. Okay. Uh, I don't know what to say about that without being able to see, see it. Oh, okay. 
I, I'm not sure why it just a point it just gets a little harder. Oh, okay. <laughs> What was your gauge? Did you get to the 10? Oh, this is uh, me, Victor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Okay. And I'm, my gauge is tighter. OK. Are you using our yarn or a different yarn? I'm using your yarn. OK. It's going to get tighter when you start doing a, a heel, too. Okay. And to, to adjust, I, I would um, move the knob down, so decreasing it. So right. You're going to move it down to form a larger stitch. Okay. Thank you. So Grace, are your machines operational yet? You're muted. Yeah, uh, they're, it's, they're not operational yet. I just haven't had the, the um, t time to go through everything and go through the manuals because I don't really know how to make them operational. Okay, and they're auto knitters. Yeah, they're auto they, knitters, yeah. How old are they? Do you know, are they American or Canadian? Well, the, the, the literature says Canadian. Okay. What's yeah. the machine say? It should be on the base of the machine. We'll say made in Canada or made in the United States. I think I think I think they might have been made in the United States. Okay. Um, I think the only the only thing you have to watch with auto knitters is um, that they were made with pot metal and they expanded a lot. Um, okay. There's two screws underneath to take the cylinder off. Mm -hmm. right, if you take your cylinder off uh, and it pops right off, you're in pretty good shape. Um, if it comes off hard, I like a, a product called Liquid Wrench. Okay. Uh, they they talk about you know um, rust yeah. uh, whatever it is, but I like Liquid Wrench. Um, you can spray it right on it, and it takes all the grease off and lubricates the parts. Okay. And just just take it all apart. Yeah, because the machine that I have, I know that um, I had bought it from a, a woman who, I mean, it had been used within the last 10 years. Yeah. So it's not like it hasn't been used for 80 years. It's, it's, it was functional uh, a, a 10 years ago. So, and it still has the, it still has the yarn. The bonnet on it, yeah. Yeah, so. You know, where so do you live? I live in uh, uh, British Columbia. Okay. Yeah, so. Oh, who's... Yeah. Well, the, the, the sock machine guy, Dave Lord's on the other side of the country. Okay. But I can I can talk you through it. There's not very many parts in these things. Um, but I would get some liquid wrench, spray it down, take it okay. apart. Okay. Um, you know, and just got to make sure that your cylinder seats correctly. Okay. Um, I would buy new needles for sure. Yeah, you I already those. did that on your recommendation. Okay. I bought 100 needles. So is that yep. the same person? that I bought the needles from? Is he the guy? No. no. Well, did you buy it from Dave Lord, uh, Chambord in uh, Quebec? No, I bought the needles from some guy out of Washington State, I think. In Gora Valley. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's Pat Fly, that's a woman. Uh, okay. she, she's the needle person. Okay. Dave actually uh, makes machines and parts and stuff. And if you get into needing auto knitter parts, let me know, I've got pretty much most of it. Because I, I want to take an inventory of the all that other stuff that I have because it's it there's there's a bunch of stuff there that I have no yep. idea what it is. Well, so probably it probably came with a bobbin winder and a swift and a little thing that looks like a spider. Yeah. Um, yep. And that's a cast on bonnet and throw that away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're really difficult to work with. Um, yeah, and the bobbin winder will come in handy. Um, they all come with the bobbin winders and swifts, the old ones. So you're saying that it was made out of pot metal. And so it's, I know that's kind of brittle and, and not, yep. and, and, you know, not, it, not very, um, yeah. 
Um, you don't want to drop it. Yeah. You know, they're, okay. they're cast. Um, and so you see people that have them on a bar stool, don't do that. Because okay. the bar, they're top heavy then, they fall, they break. Okay. Um, you know, it, it just, ha it happens. Get a good so, workstation. So what's your favorite, but, what's your favorite um, machine? Um, my or favorite rate. machine. I have different favorites for different reasons. Um, my my Erlbachers are my go-to. Um, I see a lot of auto knitters here just because they were manufactured around here. Yeah. Um, a lot of the Bogan auto knitters, you know, we've actually met the Bogans and bought a bunch of stuff from them. Um, and then I've got some machines. I've, I've been collecting like gear hearts and auto knitters and that kind of stuff. Now my collection is getting a little more um, diverse that I've got a, um, a Bickford that was, it's one of eight known surviving machines. Wow. Um, you know, just I getting some weirder machines than just the, you know, I've got an Imperial and I've got a Griswold and just trying to find some of the ones that you don't see every day. Right, right, yeah. So they, okay, uh, we, go ahead, I'm sorry. Are they making new ones? Is anybody there's, making there's five manufacturers of new ones now. There's the gear, uh, the Earlbachers, there's yeah. Dave Lord in Canada, there's Jackie Grant in New Zealand. Um, there's the Lamb Tuttle in Chicopee, Massachusetts. And there's the plastic one out of Scotland, the Ashcroft Makers. Um, I got one of those coming. Uh, I've never, I haven't seen one. So I'm gonna try it out and see what, else, what it's like. Are we all caught up? All right, so. We're gonna do it's gonna first thing you're gonna want to do is put your weights back on, just your stem weights. You don't need your your heel weights. Stem weights on, set your counter back to zero. And go back to my speaker view. So I don't have a very good angle to show this sock. Um I'll do it now. My women's socks, I, I make 50 rows of mock ribbing and then 10 rows of pre-heel. My men's socks, I do 60. So there's not a huge difference, in, which is one of the reasons that I don't change out cylinders for, um, you know, the different ways of doing it. So we're going to set your counter back to zero, and we're going to advance the counter four rows. One, two, three, four. And that's because we did the first three where, where I pulled down, did three, pull all the needles out, it tripped the counter one other time that way. All right, so we're at four and we're gonna do 50 rows and we get to 50 rows, we're gonna stop at three o'clock. Now, anytime I've been messing with anything, I'll stop and take a good close look at my needles to make sure that I haven't flipped the latch shut. Everything looks good. And I always go slow my first time around, make sure everybody's knitting, and then off you go. You're gonna do 50 rows. Stop at three o'clock. Actually do 49 rows and stop at three o'clock. And someone say something when you get there.
But Karen, you haven't had any issues yet. I did drop a stitch a while back, but I managed to get it back up. Oh, there you go, good. Now you know if you're gonna repair a stitch, you wanna do it from the outside of the sock, not the inside, because then you won't see it. If you do it from the outside, you won't see it. If you do it from the inside, you will. When I first started, I dropped a lot of stitches and got a lot of practice repairing them. Yeah. Like I said, I'm just not a fan of repairing stitches. And the more experience you have, the less you're gonna drop them too. So um, we're gonna start putting needles back in. You guys pretty close to catching up, David and Rachel? Yeah, okay. How are you doing, Victoria? Okay, I'm still pulling them out, but you go ahead, okay. I, I'm yep. following. It's all being recorded, you can check back anytime. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna put needles back in. So again, starting back here at nine o'clock, I'm going to put my needle in, flip it up, put it down in. And then I'm going to take the stitch above it, right here. Can you, oops. So I'm back at 9 o'clock. I put my stitch in, and I'm going to grab this lower bar right here on this stitch, and I'm going to drag it over. It's going to make that little figure eight. Okay? What? Uh, I think she left. I didn't kick her out. I don't know. She's not, it's not saying she wants to come in. Can you show the figure eight again, please? Yeah, I'm going to do a bunch of them. So um, there's a better angle. This is, a, is this a good one to see? I'm going to put it in and I'm going to flip, take this lower bar. Is that a good, can you see it? I'm going to, where did I put it? Right here. I'm going to grab this bar right here and drag it up. Is that clear? I'm gonna just keep doing that, work in the direction the yarn's going. The bar just before it. Is that good? So basically, just like you would um fix a drop stitch on a bonnet you're this that's all you're doing you're grabbing the one below and printing nope, it no 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 i'm grabbing the one beside it this needle so this needle i just oh. put in okay this needle i just put in so i don't want the part that's in the front of the needle here i want the stitch right behind it and drag that up is that clear um how about this one can you see that one I put it there. I'm gonna take this stitch right here on the needle just before it and drag it up. And that will make that little figure eight. All right, that, let me try that. Let's see if I can get in a little closer here. Yeah, she's not, she's showing that she's here. So this one here, needle in, and then this stitch right there. I grab that and drag it up. I'm gonna try and get one really close here. So if my camera's all screwed up, that's why. Uh, okay. This one right here, going in, this stitch right, right here. Okay. Again, it's going to do that all the way around. Now, this will pick up those stitches. Um, 
but it will leave a gap. It looks, some people call it design element. It looks like a mistake. And I try to do them as I'm doing it so I don't forget one. Well, I can actually show you something here. This one here. Uh, well, it's not showing up. That's what it, oh, come on. Now, it's too close to give you a good view of it. No, that was me. Why did I go to uh, low battery? Yeah. Everybody good? Nobody's saying anything. We're all trying to get it done. <laughs> Just got a couple needles to go. Okay. I got to take the phone off for just a second to plug it in. So now don't forget to look underneath and marvel at the work you're doing. You can see your mock rib. We all good? Dave, you're frozen. Uh, no, I'm still working. Uh, your video's you frozen. Me? Yeah, I can hear you, but your video's frozen. There you go. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'm still, uh, I got, I'm not halfway done. Okay. The joys of living in the country with bad internet. <laughs> Tell me about it. Jim, yes. How do you get this yarn? Get the yarn to uh, all the colors to keep from pooling. I'm oh, not telling you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Those are all just hand painted yarn. We actually take foam brushes and dye and paint it in there. Nice. And we have a a page on that on the YouTube page too of how to do it. Amy, uh, my wife here, she does the dyeing and the, a lot of the hand painting. 
and she's done a couple of tutorials on it. Do you keep mentioning the YouTube page? What is that? We're it's Good Karma Farm YouTube Good page. Karma. Okay, thank you. Dog. Yes, it is. She's reverse sneezing. <laughs> it's a pug. Yeah, we have a bit of a zoo around here. We've got three dogs, three cats, alpacas, sheep, llamas, goats, chickens. And a partridge in a pear tree? No, no partridge. We actually had a cat. Cats want to bring it home. It was in the crab apple tree. Did you figure it out, Pam? How that's working? What, the, the mask? Your yarn, your yarn mask. No, I don't think it works right. Well, that's not correct for that machine, actually. Um, there's, no, that's not, that's not right. That's not wrong. Is they it have just, another one. They have another one that's really funky for the Laguerres. Is it a newer? You know, 50s or 40s? or It could be, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The auto knitter toppers are really easy. Yeah, they do look it. We all caught up? I am not. I dropped another stitch. Just go ahead. I'll keep, I'll catch up. <laughs> How'd you drop a stitch there? All right. If I, had, if I had the answer to that, I wouldn't have made a mistake. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, what did the machine do when it dropped it? What were you doing? It, did it, it drop actually, a stitch? It actually came off. I can see where it came completely off the needle. So did it drop a stitch or did it just come off the needle? It came did off it, the needle, which made it go down about. Right. Yeah. But you didn't drop a stitch. You like yeah. pulled the needle off of the knitting. Yeah. Or the knitting off of the needle. All right. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go 10 rows now. I cut my counter anyway, even though I can, I can do the math in my head, but we're just going to do 10 rows. And stop at six o'clock. I should go to my because now we're to the heel. We good to go? All right. So we're going to take needles from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock out of work. How many of you actually do you usually go to Rhinebeck this weekend? Yes. We miss it. It's on my bucket list. I was supposed to go last year and my grandmother died. So uh, it's, it's an experience. Last year was my first time and it was so amazing. <laughs> I don't know what the weather there is like there now this year. Yesterday, We're having rain. Yesterday was hella rainy. Today it's beautiful. 
Yeah. I live only about an hour from Rhinebeck, so. Oh, nice. Where do you live? In uh, southwestern Connecticut. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do a heel, and this is very similar to what we did on the tab part. So we're just going to crank by till it stops clicking, raise that needle, put on your heel spring, and go back the other way. And we're just going to keep doing this. Now you're using your target marks that are on your machine back here. Um, and mine is a 60 cylinder, so I'm 10 rows in on each side, which leaves me 10 in the middle. So that's the depth of heel that I like. And uh, I'm just going to do a reduction going towards those marks. And don't forget to put on your heel forks when you need them. When the knitting starts riding up. I'll have my marks on the right. I'll have my mark on the left. The yarn's getting caught up. There's my decrease. Everybody got their decrease done? <laughs> I see hunched over heads. You haven't said anything in a while, Victoria. You good? I was until I dropped a stitch. <laughs> <laughs> So Kathy, it still looks like your yarn carrier is not turned in the right direction. What do you mean? Not, not your yarn carrier, I'm sorry, your topper. It just looks like it's not in the right direction. Where's the front of it? I, I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry, what's a topper? The topper is where the heel spring is, the very top? Yeah. Yep, that thing. There's two over here and one here. And where's your machine? Right is here. it coming straight? The I'm going to move my phone here real quick. That isn't my problem. It, it just keeps locking up and 
so I finally got it where all the needles are working. And I've made socks before. It's just that when I did that tab, as I, I lifted one and I went back, half the stitches just fell off. Yeah. So I don't know if I was supposed to move the yarn when I did that. Um, well, what I'm saying is that from the angle that I'm seeing here, it looks like your yarn carrier is off to the side. Like, um, I don't know if you can see mine or not. Yours. Okay. This is an overhead view of mine okay. that the two are back here and this one in the front is pointing straight down into the middle of my cylinder. You're saying? What's that? You're saying that this should be facing me? Yep. Oh, well, there you go. I wonder if that's part of it. That's going to be part of it. Absolutely. And that's a half inch wrench to loosen up the nut underneath the top. No, it let me just turn it. I just turned right, it. Right, but you're going to want to tighten it back up. Okay. Tighten it on, on top or on the bottom? Uh, well, it should only be on the bottom. It shouldn't be on top. Okay. So th what that's saying is that, what it's saying is that your, your yarn was probably not feeding in very smoothly. Okay. Which makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. These machines don't like resistance at all. Me neither. <laughs> So everybody reduced, ready to start going the other way. So this is just like what we did with the tab. Uh, gonna go back from the left to the right, two needles down, yarn behind, latches open. Say that in your head over and over again so you don't forget it. It'd be two needles down to start, yarn behind, latches open. And then after the two on each side, because you got to do the same thing on both sides, you got to go to one needle. Needle down, yarn behind. Did you do this yep. yarn behind when you did the tab as well? Yep. See, that's that's what I, I missed. They missed the yarn behind, and that's why I dropped all the stitches, I think. Well, no, you can do it that way, but you got to make sure it's catching. Your machine has to be adjusted correctly. Got it. Because um, you can't, it's called a suicide heel. You can do it, but it's a little riskier. Okay. So if you just wrap it, it's easier. And don't forget to, you know, move your weights as you're doing this. Needle down, yarn behind, latch is open. Because what happens when you have a closed latch? Nobody? Drop stitch. Hey, Amy, will you do me a favor? I need my charts in the mill. So once you get back to your three o'clock and nine o'clock, you gotta come around in front and stop at six o'clock again. So the whole part of this process, it's a, a repetition of steps. You know, what you do on one side, you do on the other side. If you do a reduction, then you do an increase. So it's all, there's no new information being brought into this. Right now, once you have this heel done, you've made a sock, you'll have the knowledge to make a sock. Jim, do you have your pattern written down? I pretty much have it in my head. Um, I've been meaning to write it down. But again, this is recorded. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, when I, when I said earlier that my pattern, I write down my cuff and then the 50, 60, and then whatever my foot length is. And we're going to get into that here in just a minute. Okay. So you said this is recorded. Uh, how can we get access to it later? We'll put it on our YouTube page. Okay, good. That, that's free access. And again, I would go back, if you're gonna to go to the YouTube page, look at making a cast on bonnet, especially you said yours has rings on it. I don't understand the ring thing, but you can just make another one that's great practice. Okay. Because like right now, if we make a perfect sock, you're gonna to need to make the match. And when we finish up here, I will give you what we did for numbers so that you can write it down and try and duplicate it if you, um, don't have any issues with your socks and make a wearable pair. And did everybody get my handout I sent? The sock chart? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So let me know when everybody's back up to, what's the matter, David? I am done for today. I will continue to watch, continue to take <laughs> notes, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm done. What happened? Not enough bourbon. There you go. <laughs> it, it dropped. Drop? Yeah, it dropped some stitches. Or actually, Where? no. They came off of the needle. I, I thought I had them raised up, and apparently I bumped it with my hand. And then when I went to crank, it yep. missed them because I dropped them back down. And yeah, so okay. Well, that's the difference between a drop stitch and uh, and uh, a miss stitch. Yeah, it was a miss stitch. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, so now that mine's working, I need to go back to that whole rib thing. Did you remove the needles when you moved that yes. over? You totally removed yep. them. Okay. Start at nine o'clock. What do you use them for a cylinder? 64. Okay. What did, uh, um, what did you guys come up with for 64 in your mock rib? Three by one works just fine on a 64. Yeah, it's the three, three, by four. Okay. Yep. Okay. Did you find it, Amy? You know what it would be on a 54? Yeah, everybody's got that. Whose phone is this? Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna just jump in real quick because Amy just gave me her phone that she's using. So you've all got this and um, we're gonna, I'm gonna do the math on a, a woman size nine just because it's really easy. Um, so if you can pull up your, it's 10 inches, right? Okay. So if you can get your charts, I'll explain to you how it works. Okay. Or not, you know, you can still talk about it. And remember, we're making a sock, not a clock. It doesn't have to be exactly right. And we probably won't get into the Kitchener at this one, but that's online. Um, it's not that bad to do either. When I started doing this, you know, um, I struggled for months, months. And then my wife, Amy and daughter Zoe took off for a weekend and I was here alone and it clicked. I, I finally understood what the machine was doing, what I was supposed to do. I finally got it and I made Oh, I don't know, six or seven pairs while they were gone and they came back and I didn't have any idea how to um, kiss room closed. And Amy is a, a knitter and she's made socks before and she knew how to kiss her, but not the way that these are kiss her. So she would do it and she didn't like doing it. And then the light had to be right. She had to be fresh. Da -da 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 -da. And I just kept cranking out socks and I'd have all these socks made. It's like, come on. 
get the toes closed up so we can wear these things. And so finally I asked her to teach me how to do it. And uh, I really kind of enjoy doing the Kitchener. It's not a bad thing at all. Hey, Jim, going yep. back to the ribbing, on a 54 cylinder, it's divisible by three. So would that be a two by one? Uh, well, it should be. You can do a two by one, three by one. You can do whatever work. It actually doesn't have to come out even. Oh. You, know, you, you can make whatever you want. Okay. You know, okay. you can. That's how they do some of the lace patterning and stuff by changing different ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. You ready to tackle this, Grace? <laughs> All right, so I'll do a little explaining before we get going any further. So the socks, you can make them the size. Like I said, um, the woman's size nine is 10 inches total. So an, uh, a heel and a toe take an inch and a half each. So it's three inches. So you subtract that off of what you're doing. What I like to do is I'll put all my needles in and I'll crank, oh, sorry, roughly, 40 rows and then I'll take a measurement into my heel. So that's where you hear about sock sticks, but I'm trying to get to um, 10 inches total. So from my heel, if I measure the halfway point of my heel to the top of my cylinder and I get to um, eight and a half inches, then that, that extra inch and a half to get me to 10 will be my toe. If that makes any sense. I can show, I'm gonna put my needles back into work. Two closed latches. All right, go back to. All right, so all my needles are back in. I'm going to hang these bars up. So this is where you want to set your counter back to zero and take off your heel spring. Now, if you wanted a, a tighter fitting sock um, or a narrower sock, you can leave your heel spring on and it will just make it much tighter. So uh, all my needles are back in work. Check to make sure all my latches are open. They are, I'm back at zero. And I'm gonna go to 45 rows and I'm gonna stop at six o'clock. What did I say, 45? I'm gonna stop at six o'clock. Now I can take off my heel forks. And I need to take off my stem weights. And then have a ruler handy. So, um, What I'm gonna do is if you look here, there's my center line on my heel. So there's my bottom point of my heel. I wanna get the ruler right into that halfway point of the heel like that. And so right now at the top of my cylinder, I'm just about seven inches. So that tells me I need to go um, at least, well, I'll go five rows. And you just kind of creep up onto where you wanna be. You can say you're going to do the math in your head and it won't come out that way. That's seven and a half. Uh, 
because right now I'm at eight. So another five rows. So that puts me at 60 rows. to be at eight and a half inches on my sock, which when I add my toe, will give me a total of 10 inches, which will be a woman size nine. So you gotta look on your chart and find out what your total um, measurement should be for your sock and then inch your way into it. And then you can put your heel back in, your buckle back up, put your weights on. And so that's where my pattern comes in where I do the same cuff every time and then I did 50 rows of mock ribbing and then 10 rows of um, straighten it to the pre-heel and then I do 55 well I'm doing 60 rows for this one for um, the size 9 sock and you want to write this down now so you don't forget it and you go did I do 55 or did I do 60 rows for that sock. And that way you know your socks are gonna come out even on the other end. Any questions? So far, so good. Good. And so now you're just going to do another heel, which is the same thing as a toe, or a toe is the same thing as a heel. So we'll take the needles out of work from three to nine again. So David, do you understand the concept of it now? I understood the concept of it before, and I think what I was missing is the yarn behind. <laughs> okay. Part of my other problem I'm noticing is my three o'clock and nine o'clock position is different than yours. Yours makes a heck of a lot more sense to me. Okay. Um, well, what they've done is they've made their three o'clock and nine o'clock in relation to their river pin. Um, again, I'm not using my river, so I don't really care where it is. I, you can make your three o'clock and nine o'clock wherever you want them to be. You know, it's a, it's a full circle. You can do it wherever you want to be at. at. You know, and there's nothing wrong with the river. It's just not my choice. Like I said, I very rarely will just knit a sock. Um, so like I'll knit at our farmer's market and I'll knit for people while they're shopping. So it goes pretty quickly. Um, and you can't see anything with the river on there. But as much as you have to remember right now, now try and have a river that's timed correctly that the, the short needles are lining up with the cylinder needles and actually timed out correctly and not see it, that you've dropped a stitch until you take it off. They don't like it when you swear like that at the market. So now do a toe. Somebody's moving. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not on mute. That's all right. You don't have to be. We're all friends now. It's 
funny how everybody's already learned to use the Zoom etiquette. Except my dog. Jim? Yeah. Uh, Victoria again. I'm just wondering, um, and I don't know, it's probably about placement of the weight. So just when yeah. I'm cranking, I notice that um, the stitches want to ride up a bit. Yeah. And I'm not quite, you know, I have the weight. I mean, I'm not working on a heel or anything. I've positioned my weight. Um, and I've also been like kind of pulling down a little as I'm going. What causes it to ride up? Your tension's too tight. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's simple. Yeah. So try cranking. Does that knob, does your knob um, click into a place? Um, does it lock into a position? Uh, yeah. So try one, try one click. See where that gets you. Right. It's going to take a couple of rounds before you'll feel the difference. Really, you too. Oh, so much better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I say, I've already, I've made all these mistakes. <laughs> After I do the mock rib and I'm yep. starting to put my needles back in and then, you know, slipping the, the stitch over, then I do yep. 10 more. Is that my pre-heel stitches? Exactly. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks. And I gotta say that our sock yarn that we spin here, this is our grooviest yarn that, since it's my weight, it's SOX, that you get one skein one day and the next skein might be slightly different. I do that one completely by feel, not by numbers. All of our worsted and sport and bulky and all that, you know, there's a formula for it. This is mine. So it, it kind of depends on what I'm using for raw materials of, it gets to where it feels right, if that helps at all. <laughs> but it generally comes out to about 10 stitches to the inch. But I, one of the biggest things that I find people struggling with is the machine's not adjusted correctly and they're overthinking it. You know, like I say, this machine only does what it does. It's not battling you. But if you have it adjusted correctly, you know, it takes some practice still. You know, you gotta, you gotta walk before you run. You know, and if you're working on heels, do a heel, do a couple rows, do another heel, do a couple rows, do another heel. And you can frog it out and use the yarn again. And even if you cut it, it's still not ruined because you can always, um, you know, when we started that we had the tail and the overlapping, you could do that again. And, you know, nothing ever gets ruined, which is nice. And you don't want to learn this on some crappy, you know, lion brand yarn or whatever because then you get a really good sock made out of crappy yarn life is too short for crappy yarn oh jim i just have to say this again it's 
detention made all the difference. Now it's like butter. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. And that's why one of the reasons that I say don't use a different yarn, use one yarn until you know what you're doing. Because you can put another yarn on there that's going to be slightly heavier or slightly thinner, and none of the stuff is going to work the same way. So you use one yarn, you get through that part. That's one thing you don't have to think about. The less you have to think about these machines, the better off you are. Now, how far did you decrease? 10 rows again? For what? Before you started increase for your toe. For the you tab or the for the tab or the for the heel? For the toe, what you're doing right now. It's just like doing a heel. You're going all the way to your double marks. Oh, right uh, to the okay. Yep. The only time you do the six rows, Jesus Gilly, is when um, when you're doing the tab. And if the tab is confusing, you could just crank out like 20 rows or 30 rows or 40 rows, whatever you want to do, and hang a cuff. You know, what, does, what is the tab? I, I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Um, going backwards here where I want to go. Oh, There's, I see. Okay. So it's, it's like a tab on an ankle sock. Okay. I, I do that on all my socks. It's okay. just a little just a little detail. Thank you. You know, there's lots of ways you could do this too. I mean, you can, you can start off with uh, the mock rib and mock rib your cuff too. There is no pass fail. It's just whatever you want to make. Okay. We have a toe. All right. Hey. Who said that? Rachel. Yes, Rachel. Yep. Sorry for the delay. I am keeping you on mute, so I have to, you know. No worries. You, and I, we don't have to mute, you know. Karen, you're not done yet? You really don't want to hear the yelling. <laughs> I was going to say, I definitely needed to mute earlier. Definitely. Yeah, I saw, I saw you, David. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I made a mistake on the heel, and there's a big hole. So I'm just gonna start over after this and try okay. again. All right. But once if you got through the heel, you've got a sock. You just gotta expand on that. How you doing, Pam? I'm watching. Okay, that's fine. You know, do it at your own pace. Do it at your own pace. Thank you. you know? yeah. And so I guess it's just, Victoria, where are you at in this? Are you at the toe? Uh, I am at the heel. <laughs> okay. So Rachel, it's you and me. All right. All right. All right. So here, here we go. We're going to finish up here. So now the, you've turned your toe. Right? Yes. All right. So now we're going to put all these needles back into work. And remember, two at a time, fingers in the latch, and you won't drop stitches on the back side. I don't know how many times I did that when I was starting. Because you just slam them down, flips the latches shut. And I, I know it sounds stupid that I keep saying that it's easier to not drop stitches than it is to fix them. And this is a classic example of doing that, where if you look at your needles enough times and find out your latches are open, you're not going to drop those stitches. So that's an easy way to prevent that from happening. You got them back into work, Rachel? Okay. So now I take your heel spring off. And I don't hang the bar up on the toe just because it makes it a little bit more confusing. 
makes it a little more confusing when you are go to do the Kistner because you have some overlap and stuff. So now we're going to just crank right to 3 o'clock. Don't go past it. And you're going to cut your yarn off um, about halfway to your Kona yarn on the back. So you're going to have a tail that's probably 12 to 18 inches long. Well, it's actually, it's actually longer than that. You know, I've got, if you can see here, I got this much of a tail. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to take that yarn and drag it right over the three o'clock red dot, just like we did when we started with the waist yarn. That's going to go there. And then you bring in your waist yarn, thread it through the machine. Same thing as we did when we started, only in reverse. Enough yarn to go across a cylinder, go back a couple of needles so they'll hug together. Do another check of all your needles to make sure they're good. Hold the two together, crank forward. I like, you know, eight, 10, 12 rows, something like that. Just enough to keep the stitches live. Again, I stop at three o'clock and uh, you can do it anyway. You can start, stop wherever you want to, but I always stop at three and six and there's less to remember. Um, it's just muscle memory. And then cut my yarn off just over my yarn carrier here, just up a little bit. Get that out of the way. And you there, Rachel? Are you with me? All right. So now you're going to reach underneath and grab everything. Your, your sock, your heel weights, everything with your left hand. After your yarn's cut off, and just crank. And it'll come right off. You take your weights off before you stab yourself. All right, so now I'm gonna switch this a little bit. So here's our, our finished sock. There's our cast on bonnet. Oh, come on. Trying to find the camera angle here. All right, the cast on bonnet, the waist yarn. There's our cuff, a nice beautiful mock ribbing. A wonderful heel mm -hmm. in the foot and then that's where you're going to have to Kitchener it over. So the Kitchener on these is across the top of the toes, not the end of the toe. So now that I got this here, I'm going to flip my, my uh, cuff over and take my scissors and I'm just going to cut in here a little bit. And I'm looking for uh, the tail. So you don't want to cut off the tails when you started. So I'm cutting as close to here as the cuff as I can without cutting. Here's my tail when we started. Get that out of the way. Cut this stuff out. All right, so there's my cast on bonnet with a waist yarn, and I'll just peel that off and use that again. Um, and that's why usually my mistake is I will cut this off close to those loops, and I'll end up cutting my loops off. Um, plus, they get beat up and worn. So it's good to know how to make a cast on bonnet. And I got my little spittoon trash can here. And now this waste yarn pulls right out. So that's what I end up with. And I've got this tail here that I'll just weave in three or four rows. Um, and then I'll just stuff it down there, cut it off. 
And then to do the Kitchener, I've got, this is my waste yarn here and my product yarn here. I'll show you the first couple. I, I like to cut off my waste yarn tail just so it gets out of my way. And then I like these uh, hook tip needles. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see them or not. Um, out of my way. So I thread my needle and then, I don't know if you can see it here or not, but I'm gonna come up, let me pull this. There's the hole in the corner of a heel. So I wanna come up on the upper side of that through the last knitted stitch there. Pull that closed and flip this over. And I, this isn't gonna be a very good example because you're not gonna be able to see it. It's getting dark in here. Um, but I'm gonna pick up a half a bar on this one and then a half a bar into the opposite side. And so it's just kind of, it's more of a weave than anything. And I think uh, the Erlbacher book is pretty good about explaining it. But I could do two hours on the, on the Kitchener stitch too. So that's it. That's all there is to making a sock. Now you gotta make the match. <laughs> I have a sock, woohoo! All right. How long have you had your machine? <laughs> a year. All right. Okay. Now you got to make the match, and it's, <laughs> it's it's not that hard. You got you wrote down what you did, right? Yes. So we did ten rows, a, a five row reduction of uh, five needle reduction, a five needle increase, ten rows, hang the cuff. We did three rows, then the mock rib, whatever your numbers were. We did 50 rows of mock rib, put the needles back in, 10 rows of free heel, turned a heel, and did whatever your foot length was, turn to toe. That's it. Questions? No, but uh, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. I. Uh, I know that's going to be a bit of a learning curve just to figure out the mechanics of the machine, but the sock part is, is, is great. I can already see some of the changes that I might make to the toe because you yep. can change the depth of the toe and make it for a boxier toe. You don't need to go in that far. You can make sure. it longer and splatter. You can do a yep. similar thing with the heel. You can, you can do rounded toes. You can do afterthought you can, toe, heels. You can, you can do all yeah. kinds of crazy things. Absolutely. It's, it's the tube that is the boring part because you can yep. do all that other stuff, do it hand done. And if you just, if you, yeah, I mean, I can see the possibilities just, just so well. Well, you got to go to the YouTube page because you can see Argyles, you can see Fair Isles. Yeah, like it's lanes. just. You can so, do hats, you can do mittens, you can do gloves, you can do a lot. This is yeah. just a basic, you know, a basic structured sock. Yeah. Get you going, get you knitting, get you some success, and then you can figure out what you want to do after that. Yeah, just got to get the machine working. And it was really helpful to see the other difficulties that the other participants had. Yep. Because then I know, okay, that can happen, that can happen, that. So watch out for that, that, that. Although I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it's now something that was, I don't know what the heck's going on to, this is completely doable. They're, they're, they're all solvable problems. Yes. Um, and especially if you've got an old machine, I don't mess with old needles ever. Uh, you always yeah. put new needles in, they're just not going to be worth it. And so... Um, there's, you know, there's only two adjustments down here, one adjustment there. So there's not a lot to adjust. You just got to put the time in. Yeah, and I, and, I, <clears throat> and I Googled the other machine that I have. It's a Verdun that was, that was built in, oh. manufactured in the 40s, which is a, <coughs> a, it's a, like a Laguerre yep. machine. So, yep. so the one that I have <coughs> is similar to the one that you were working on right now. Well, if you need to get rid of any of those, let me know. Okay. <laughs> I got three of them. <laughs> oh, three's, three's just starting out. <laughs> yeah, well. I, yeah. I, I've got, I think I've got four Erlbachers alone and two auto knitters, a Dundas, 
of Bickford. Um, I can't even think of them all. I got a bunch. And they just kind of, they start showing up. When you start looking in the right places, you start finding them. You know, I've got. How come? Sorry. You don't have any Ligars. How come? Uh, I just sold one last week. Oh. I had one. Oh, okay. I was wondering if you did um, over. The only machines I'm not real fond of, Victoria, be quiet, is the NZX. <coughs> you know, it's kind of like Ford and Chevys. You know, you like what you like and you don't like what you don't like. Exactly. Yeah. That's, you know, if it works, it's a good machine. This has been amazing. I got to go start dinner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you, you so any, much. This was if very you have helpful. Any questions, if you have any questions, contact me. Um, like I say, like our YouTube page, like our firm page. Um, see all the stuff we're doing. And we'll keep you up to date when we're having the next crank in. Um, yeah, and thank you all for joining. It was, this is actually, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Thank, thank you. you. And I thank love you. Thank you. Good night. Good luck, everybody. Thanks. Hey, bye. Bye now. Bye. All right, thank you.